My name is Jesse Reichler from DonationCoder.com and the Co-op for Two YouTube channel. This video I'm going to quickly demonstrate a plugin for OBS I've written called JR Timestamps. It's for uh, automatically recording a file of timestamps compatible with YouTube for any recording or live streaming or combination that you do, automatically detecting sessions based on when you transition to one of the scenes in your scene list that you consider a break. Also supports using a hotkey to insert events in the timestamps. Before I start, I should say up until now, I've used a plugin called InfoWriter, which is quite flexible and can do a bunch of things, but is pretty heavyweight and a little complicated for this task and also I've had trouble with its the offsets not being right for live streams that is the times are off by a few seconds based on how long it takes to start streaming etc so I'll show you how my plugin works and that'll be clear so I've got my OBS window open I've got my JR stats panel here which I describe in a different video just going to start recording here. We're going to see a couple dropped frames while it runs some scripts and gets started. We'll just reset that. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we're recording here for uh, 10 seconds so far. It knows we're in a break. All right, so I'm going to switch to the front camera after about 20 seconds. Okay, so I switched to the front camera, 23, 24 seconds. Okay. So this would be my first switch to my first real scene, maybe coming from um, uh, introduction lead-in. Uh, and then here I am having a session. You could imagine that the session I switched cameras for a little bit, did some other stuff, and then sometime around 28 seconds I went to a break. Okay, the stats is this has nothing to do with the timestamper. This is just for us to keep track of. Maybe we go on a break for 15 seconds or so. Then we go back. Now we're back live, recording. And then let's say somewhere around here, I hit a hotkey. I'm just going to do it off screen. You won't be able to see it. But now I'm doing a, a hotkey pressed. Um, okay, and then I end my video here, and then we stop recording. Okay, so now let's go into the recording folder of OBS. So here's the recording folder of OBS. You've just, this directory is set in the OBS settings, and here's the file that just got recorded. And here's the additional file that the plugin has created. It uses the same name as whatever file you recorded, uh, timestamp.txt. And let's double click that to bring that up. And this is what it's written out. So it's written a little comment line here reminding you when this file was recorded. And then here are the timestamps. You can see at this time the recording began and then session one, session two, then I triggered a hotkey, then I ended. Now, the way it's gotten these two times is that this is when I switched from break, the first one is when I switched from break screens to my front camera, and then I changed cameras around, it doesn't record that. And then when I switched to a one minute break, it doesn't record that. But then when I came back from the second break, it started a new session and recorded that. And then the hotkey is the one I manually triggered. So these timestamps are suitable to just paste into your YouTube video and you'll see it'll make sections, chapter marker sections after each break. You could also, if I just want to put this away, let's try something different. Let's go into, that's how I use it, by the way. I don't care about when I switch cameras. I just care about when I come back from breaks. Normally I'm recording six or seven hour streams. I might have a break every hour, so it nicely breaks up my video into six or seven sessions. 
But now you could also go into the options and say, I want you to record every scene transition. By the way, this is this list here is how it knows what scenes are breaks and what scenes are live. All right, I'm going to tell it to record all scene transitions. We'll close this up. And then I'm also going to show you what happens when you start recording before you start going live, before you start actually broadcasting publicly. So I'm going to select a broadcast here. Okay, so I've selected a broadcast. I'm going to start streaming, which is also going to start recording. So I'm going to click this button here, start streaming, which also automatically, because of the way I've configured OBS, automatically starts recording simultaneously. I'm just going to reset this here. Okay, so I'm streaming and I'm recording. The stream on YouTube is actually going to be offset by a few seconds, even in the best of cases where I've gone live at the same time I've started streaming. But in this case, it's even odder because we haven't actually started broadcasting live to YouTube. So I'm 32 seconds into my recording and into my streaming, but the actual recorded stream on YouTube hasn't started yet. Okay, a little bit weird to understand. Um, but until I click go live, it's actually not live on YouTube. So even though my recording has got 52 seconds in it and I've been broadcasting for 54 seconds, it's not actually live on YouTube. So now I'm going to click go live. Okay, so now we're actually on the air live broadcasting on YouTube. And it's important that the timestamps if you're going to put in YouTube, are synced not to the recording start, which is a minute ago, but to now, a couple seconds, 18 seconds ago, when the actual YouTube stream started recording. So we'll see if this works. And remember, I told it to record all scene transitions. So I'm going to switch to the front camera about 30 seconds in to the broadcast. Now I'm going to switch to the Let's say the close-up camera, 10 seconds in. Then I'm going to switch to a break. Then I'm going to switch to technical difficulties. Then I'll switch back to the front camera. Back to the top camera. The close-up camera, close-up camera zoomed, back to front camera, and now we'll say end broadcast. Okay, so let's go take a look at the file that got created. So there's the recording. Here's the recording. And here's the timestamp file, which we'll now take a look at. Okay, what do we see here? Okay, so notice here it's not, the previous file said session one, session two. Now we've got an entry for every transition of every scene has been recorded. And what you should note is that the recording started every time something new triggers, a recording, a streaming, or broadcast, it resets the times to zero. So if we had actually changed camera scenes, it would be recorded here like this. 10, say front camera, if we had changed camera, and then it would reset back to zero. Because it doesn't know if you're ever going to go into streaming or ever going to go into record uh, broadcasting. So it just resets to zero. So. If I were going to paste this into YouTube, I'd just go from here to here. I'd take this and I'd paste it in to YouTube. And we would see that the front camera switch happened 28 seconds into the YouTube broadcast. So these are always synchronized for your YouTube stream, not your recording stream. If you wanted to sync it to the recording and not the YouTube, you'd have to change settings. And there you have it, JR timestamps for making YouTube, automatic YouTube timestamp lists for your videos.